Okay, you guys, this is another quick and dirty. I am on site. Just my little, my little light and my <laughs> measuring tape because it has metal on it. It has a magnet so it helps hold it in place for me. This is the outlet that we have difficulty with. It has a uh, top of the outlet. It's notched out, it's broken from use, no more wear. Gotta change it, won't pass inspection. We'll discuss some of the tools I use as I use them, okay? Uh, we're gonna use probably this line, this little straight edge, uh, definitely multimeter, and uh, this uh, wire, client wire strippers, and that should be enough to do this outlet. This is lives. Oh, I'm sorry, one last thing, excuse me. Can't work live with product gloves. <laughs> Not supposed to work live, You're supposed to put your tester in, whatever it is you're using. Uh, my tester at, okay. Excuse me, an outlet tester like this, or a uh, GFCI tester, which this is. Those two yellow lights tells me it's wired correctly. I'm not sure if we got three wires in here, five wires, or what's going on. I won't know until we open it up. Okay, so let's pause the video, open it up, see what we got. Okay, there's my multimeter. I took the outlet out, and we had. Two neutrals on this side and we have one ground which is the bare wire on top and you can see the lip was broken a little bit more on this side we have two hots excuse me um, one I took off the outlet so I could test which one actually is hot on the previous outlet the bottom one was hot so I'm thinking the top one wasn't on here the top one is actually hot I tested with my meter Below. I tested from the ground to the hot wire and that one is definitely hot the proper way to do this outlet or most outlets or any outlet that I know about take off your hot first then your neutral and then your ground when you put them back you put them back in reverse order it would be ground neutral then hot since none of my wires are hot here except that top one I'm gonna do all the other wires first and that one last uh, and a few times I do videos I discuss how the wire should be duped in the direction the screw is tightened. So you'll see that here, and you'll see that in the other hour, okay? All right, and that's good, good enough for now. Let's start pulling everything out, changing the outlet, putting it back together, show you what's going on. Okay, we got a bit of a hot mess over here. <laughs> uh, we got a ground. You notice I have my gloves on, okay? Um, we got our two neutrals, the white one on this side, and we got two that presumably are hot, but actually one is hot, one is a line, and one is a load. The outlets here are wired in series, means they're wired from one outlet to another. They're not wired parallel, but they pick up power from the top and the bottom, which is a different video, different explanation. You guys can look it up online, okay? These are definitely wired in series. That's why you got one line up here, and then this load is going to the next outlet, okay? Um, you also notice I opened up the grooves on the wires themselves so I could fit them in the new outlet a little bit easier and I could cramp it down with my little uh, wire stripper. Okay, they just work really good to climb. Uh, these will strip uh, straight and uh, strand. So these are really, really nice. I got to get the model number, put these uh, in the description. Um, have these 20 years. Uh, the PK position just recently got a few years ago. Works great. For that, I used to use uh, Wiggy uh, over 20 years ago. Wiggy style, anyway, it was made by ID. It wasn't actually a black Wiggy. And then uh, after that, I used Fluke for a while. Um, but things get stolen, lost. <laughs> and I'm very happy to have that BK position. Been working great for me, even for capacitors uh, on the HVAC systems that came with it. At the time when I bought the meter, I understood you needed a separate meter for capacitors. I'm very happy to see that has that. It actually has an amp setting. If you just put it on the bare wire after a breaker, things don't stand later on. Okay, but that is my hot mess, and let's put it back together. Okay, I put the neutrals back and the ground. Did those first. Um, technically, it should be the ground neutrals and then the hot. Okay, and you can see the wires are wrapped as tight as I can get them with my little uh, strippers in the proper direction, which is the way the screws go down. This side's a little harder to see, but uh, they're in place. The top one was the hot one, okay? And then the other one is a line. 
there's a tab right here there's a tab in the middle of the outlet right there there's a uh, if you break that then you only have a hot on top and you can use two hots like two uh, with a switch for a light on an outlet okay you can also separate the neutrals if you need to uh, but for the most part I don't see neutrals separated I see them shared but I will see the hot separated on some switches so when you take one out you got to take note of that make sure that it's not separated if you have two hot that's, and it's separated it's there for a reason might be running a light switch to the top uh, outlet and to the bottom might just be uh, constant uh, current okay all right I'm gonna put it back together now uh, you'll see me bend the wires a little bit so it's easier to put in place like that and then I will uh, put my screws in cover and we can test it out now while it's outside that could help to make sure we got all the wiring correctly before we put it in so let's see if I can find my tester and put it in there this is my tester I gotta switch hands <laughs> not so easy okay good okay oh breaker's off gotta turn the breaker on I'll be right back here now you can see my two yellow lights um, the reason why the break is off is because I have arc fault here and sometimes with arc fault breakers uh, if you take off a wire put on a wire it'll trip the breaker they're that sensitive especially with aluminum wiring so that can happen to anybody okay um, but it's a good thing having the breaker off is definitely a better way to work it's not a good idea to work live I do it a lot I'm used to it but it's definitely not recommended All right uh, just being honest Okay, let's put the everything back together. Okay, now that I got the outlet in place, um, sometimes you have issue where you have a gap in the bottom and there's no drywall there and you need a spacer. They do sell those spacers and they fill up most gaps. Sometimes you have to use a longer fine thread drywall screw with, in combination with those uh, adapters. I hope to include them in this video, get the proper name and make your life easier if you have an issue you're replacing an outlet and it moves around when you put the face cover on you do not want it to move around okay so i'll put the cover on here test it again and then show you those adapters so let me pull out my little tester and when you put it in the outlet should not move uh, you should not break the cover plate it should be nice and stiff like that Okay, and you can see my two yellow lights again. Okay, so this outlet is wired correctly. Job well done. Um, last thing I gotta show you is those uh, those adapters, I was talking, those spaces I was talking about. That's very important. Bye. Okay, you guys, these are the spaces. They're one eighth inch switch receptacle spaces. They come in different colors. They usually are bright, lime green, sometimes yellow. And this is what they look like. You can break them apart to one piece and you have one spacer and you can snap them together. Two pieces or three pieces. Okay, let's see if I can snap these together. Something like this, okay. So now I got three spacers together. And you put this screw through there in the back of the device and you have a spacer from the box to the device. So it go, matches the thickness of the wall if the sheetrock is broken or something like that. I usually never use more than three. Sometimes I use one or two, but usually it's two or three on average. I've had to use four before. <laughs> and again, sometimes you have to use a drywall screw because you need a little length. I recommend the fine thread drywall screws like inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths, because those match up pretty good to the thread pitch uh, on the junction boxes, okay? One of the worst boxes I've seen totally stripped out. Looks like three eighths inch screws, very long. Would not work uh, to hold this in place. This is definitely my, not my work. You can tell how the screws, the wiring is not correct on both sides. You can see whoever did this does not know what they're doing. Now I gotta pull this box out of the wall, hopefully without breaking too much drywall. I got the breaker off and get a different box in there. <sighs> Good luck to me. <laughs> okay, I'm starting to break the box apart. Down there with my little channel lock. This is a piece of copper pipe. <laughs> Gotta be careful with that. That sucker's live, full of water. And there's the shut off right next to it. So I don't know what that feeds. Copy the bathroom because there's a wet wall right here on the upside side of that telephone junction. 
So that probably feeds the bathroom toilet. Okay, thank goodness. See if we can get it apart piece by piece. Get a new one in there. Ran across a, uh, on the bottom, there's a thick part. Looks like there's a nail. And I think there's a stud on this side. See if I can pull it out. <laughs> Turn my light off. I think the nail is right here in this thick part. I think I see it. Yep. You guys see the nail back there? <laughs> There's a nail, and there might be one on top. And I got the box out. Got to pull my wiring, and hopefully, you're lucky enough to pull another box in without making this drywall hole much bigger. Okay, let's see if I can look here. <laughs> um, got the box out. One nail on top. One nail on the bottom. Now I gotta figure out how to get the wires out of there. I might just get a snips and snip the box up to pieces so I can keep get taking out the pieces and get another one in there. Let's keep going. Hey you guys, this most of the box broken up in pieces. Um, I'm using the big sometimes. It's a dual force and of course a uh, Ten snips. <laughs> Thank God the box is uh, soft enough to fall apart in pieces. It's an older box, so it kind of a little clay. Uh, looks like a fiberglass box, but probably original, about 40 years old. Fell apart pretty good. I got it out. Got all my new wiring there. Got my breakers off. Um, hoping to test which is line load and show you what's going on when I get back. Got the breaker off. I'm gonna lock the door, um, separate the hots, so I don't have an issue until I get back. I should be back a little bit. I think I have the box in the shop, but we're gonna put it in. Another hot mess. Okay, back to my hot mess. <laughs> Junction box in pieces. Some of the tools I might be using and will be using, I'm not sure yet. Now I have to find out which one's gonna be most applicable for me here. I have a box with a plate that slides in into drywall here and it's plastic I don't like that one because it might break later on let's put a screw through the box that's gonna help me and I have one with a metal plate that one's very interesting to me see how I'm gonna get that in there uh, tell you in a second which one I pick install it show you how I'm gonna install it and go from there okay this is one of the original junction box I was talking about has that little look there see that look there when you turn the screw it goes up and it stays behind the drywall and you have one in the bottom Okay, this is a heavier duty version. This is the, one of the ones with the metal plate I like a lot. Uh, you can actually adjust it with the screw in the back, back and forth, so that's cool. Uh, a little overdo it for here. I thought the plastic might not do, but it's gonna do fine. I'm gonna slide this in on the drywall the best I can. Hopefully I can get it. Uh, actually, no, I can't put it on the outside. I might have to drag, break the drywall a little bit, mud it. That might be my best bet. So I can get it flush to the wall, excuse me. I had my camera aiming down, huh? I might, because if I can get it, if this was open wall, it would be nice, but if I take off a piece of drywall, I can make a flush, I'll screw everything down, and I should be good to go. This one seems strong enough. I thought it wasn't gonna be, but it seems fine. Okay, this is the box I decided to choose, installed. Uh, we got a wiring, I got a pigtail, uh, the two um, ground, because the pigtail that was there actually broke off. So I'm gonna have to make pigtail for the ground. The rest of the wires are excellent length, no issues. But it's gonna work out fine. If I didn't have to do this, the driver would get this box in, that would have been great. But for now, this is what it is, so I gotta mud a little bit. I'll be good to go. Okay, this is my pigtail for the ground. Let's put everything together. Okay, wired correctly. Wires in the direction the screw tightens. Same with the neutrals and the ground and the pigtail installed. I'm gonna put tape around this since I got my name on this one. These wires are really beat up, probably about 40 years old, original aluminum. I don't wanna break anything, I don't want anything to come loose. So I'm gonna wrap a uh, thing of tape here on this side, all the way around, both sides twice. Okay, just behind the mounts. Okay, before I leave for the end of the day, my total hot mess. 
Power's on, two yellow lights, I'm good. Uh, you can see the tape I wrapped around. I didn't want to take a chance just to wire the beat up. On the bottom, you should be able to see the line green spaces. I had to use two on this box. The top lined up just fine. There's some drywall from cutting out the other box. All done. Come back tomorrow, I'll sweep up. Put the blade on there, even though the wall's not fixed for tonight. For emergencies. Okay. Nobody sticks up, does up stupid in there. Stick a screwdriver in there, whatever. You don't get blamed for something. It's live now. Tomorrow, I'll call the uh, access panel. We'll be good to go.